All right, welcome back, everybody. Monday morning edition of Hot Mike rolls on overreaction Monday. No one better to uh, overreact with on a Monday morning after the weekend's game. Sam Herter joins us each and every Monday at 935 from Heroes Sports, BetMGM, as he covers all of FCS football because every fan base is always level-headed and never overreacts about anything. But uh, we've got something to overreact to this week. It's one versus two. Let's just say it. I I asked the poll question. Um, We'll find out the official poll here probably in the next half hour of who's ranked one, two, or three. I went SDSU. NDSU, Montana State. What about your ballot? Yeah, I, I kept mine the same with South Dakota State 1, North Dakota State 2, and then Montana State number 3. You know, I, you and I both tweeted that out there on Saturday of as Montana State was absolutely dominating Idaho, you know, the voting results uh, point-wise were pretty close. Yep. And so we just threw out there, like, what are other voters going to do? Like, could it be, yeah, could Montana State jump someone? <laughs> we won't have number 1 versus number 2. Uh, this week in Fargo I I still think it's going to be one and two but you just you just never know there's 50 some voters there could be enough people that really like what Montana State did and they jump them up so you never know but I think you can make an argument for really any of the three Um, I think like Montana State probably has the best win right now with what they did to Idaho Mm -hmm. Um, you know South Dakota State has the toughest strength of schedule and they have yet to lose um, NDSU maybe looks the most complete team, uh, especially with their first three games in value play. So you can go either way and it'll, it'll all sort itself out. I think a email comes in here. I'll read this to you. Dobbs. Sorry. I can't rank anyone except South Dakota state. Number one of the two time defending champs and haven't lost an FCS game since 2021. And that there, that goes to what we're talking about there. I mean, you look at what they've done. I'd say the last three weeks, Sam, because when they went to the buy after the, or before the buy, when they played, Southeast Louisiana, the way they won that game, then came out, destroyed Northern Iowa, came out, destroyed Youngstown. I think it's almost like, hey, don't forget about us. We're still South Dakota State. Yeah, I think, you know, when it comes to the defending champs being undefeated, um, I don't 100% agree with the mindset of they have to be number one until they lose because if South Dakota State only won these games by seven points over these unranked teams in – NDSU and Montana State are doing what they're doing. I still think you could move South Dakota State behind those two if that was the case. But just with how South Dakota State has looked, um, you know, a little iffy against UIW, a little iffy against, you know, their D2 opponent as well. But these last three games, especially, even though they came against unranked te- unranked teams, they still, you know, looked the part and absolutely dominated. And so in that sense, I agree that it's hard for anyone right now to jump South Dakota State. So are we arguing over – A big thing here, because your bracketology is out, which I want to get to in a second, but I would think if Montana State runs the table, they're the one. They have to be. They'd be 12-0 with an FBS win. I think that's end of story, correct? Probably. I don't – we'll have to see just with, you know, the resume. It's hard to kind of stamp that right now. If Montana State does go undefeated, uh, they would probably have – they would have the FBS win, and they would probably have three or four – ranked wins by the end of the year although um like i think i think they play i can't remember who they all play but some of the teams that were, are ranked now might not be ranked you know at that point yeah. and you know if ndsu goes doesn't lose again uh yeah they have one loss but that's the colorado they, they would also have a win over the number one team um you know in the fcs south dakota state um and ndsu might end up having more ranked wins like they might have five ranked wins compared to Montana State's four ranked win, wins and an FBS win. Um, and so, you know, how do you stack that up? I don't know. But I, I do think if South Coast State goes undefeated, they might be the one just because they're 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 the defending yep. champs. Um, but I do think Montana State, if they do run the table, which it looks like they have a pretty good opportunity to do, they'll for sure be the number or a top two seed with home field advantage and would have a pretty good argument for the number one seed. Tell us about watching that game Saturday night, what they did to Idaho. Tommy Malott accounts for four touchdowns. I mean, that was, that was a curb stopping. I mean, Montana state was like, we're not messing around. Whatever happened last year in Moscow, we're going to, we're not going to let that happen again. Yeah. It was a statement performance because obviously what we were talking about going into that game was that Montana state hasn't been tested no. yet against an FCS opponent. That is, and I guess technically still has yet to be tested, you know, yeah. with, with the blowout win that they had over Idaho, but I really kind of had a more so a gut feeling that Idaho was going to run into a buzzsaw in this one. I didn't, I think I predicted Montana state to win by 
like th- uh, 18 or 21 <laughs> points somewhere in there, not by not by this margin, but I just felt that Montana State, with it being at home, the Cats still being relatively fresh. They do have injuries they're dealing with, uh, but still being relatively fresh, um, you know, revenge factor. And then I, I still think Idaho is good, but you can just tell they're kind of starting to tail off a little bit, partially due to injury and also partially due to just they played five straight ranked opponents yeah. after back-to-back FBS opponents. And so I think kind of that high that Idaho was riding on, um, it's starting to simmer down um, a little bit. And I still think they're they're very good. They still have a great resume, but you can kind of just see the writing on the wall that Idaho might run into you know, a buzzsaw here in Montana State could roll, which is what the Cats did. By the way, you tweeted out Saturday night, you were called a naughty word for saying Idaho is going to run into a buzzsaw tonight and lose by three scores. And I tweeted back at you, was the word right? Because you were dead on. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it, it wasn't Idaho fan. So I kind of took it as like, well, okay, okay. Of course they're going to be mad that I predicted your team to lose by, by quite a yeah. bit, but um, yeah, for all the reasons I just listed out, I, I just really thought Montana state would, would win pretty decisively real quick before we get to the Dakota marker game. What does this make for Idaho with three losses now? Are they, is there any way they can get into the top eight or is that they're, they're likely going to be playing Thanksgiving weekend? I think they still can get a top eight seed. They'll, they'll need some help. Like UC Davis still needs to play both Montana yep. schools. Um, so if UC Davis loses a couple games, that could help. Um, the good thing for Idaho is the the toughest part of their schedule is already behind them. Like you can't get any tougher than, than no. what they've had. Um, and they're four and three right now, two FCS losses, two ranked teams. They have an FBS win. Uh, they have three ranked wins right now. Um, UAlbany is no longer ranked, but Abilene Christian is still ranked. I think Northern Arizona might drop out after their loss to Montana. We'll see, but their resume is still looking pretty strong. Um, And I'm, you know, and and their schedule eases up. And so I think the Vandals can win out um, from here on out, possibly um, with some quarterback injuries uh, again. And so we'll see kind of how they finish, but um, I I do still think they're, they're a strong team. They already have a good resume. And if they win out, and be nine and three with the resume that they have. I, I, that could be a top eight seed. I will throw this out. November the 16th is going to be a decision day in the big sky. Montana state plays at Davis. They're, that's going to be a monster game. Idaho hosts Weber that day. Those are two huge games to determine what's going to happen in the big sky. Exactly. Yep. Um, and that could be, well, and that's the thing with trying to figure out who's going to have how many ranked wins and all that, because right. Weber state, <laughs> might be ranked by that point. They might not be. It depends if if the Weber State team shows up that beat Montana, then they'll be really good. If it's the Weber team that gave Northern Colorado its first win in two years, then you know they're they're Man. not a very good team. But Brutal. um yeah, there still are a lot of good matchups um I had to to kind of sort things out. All right, it's Dakota Marker Week. Uh the bison you were a student covering when the bison owned this series. It's now completely flipped uh that South Dakota State owns it. Is it beyond simple to say it comes down to whoever, whatever quarterback plays the best will win this game on Saturday night? Yeah, that's probably fair because, you know, I don't, it's hard to see either team's rushing attack, you know, running wild in this one. Now, like Amari Johnson might break loose or Angel Johnson might break loose or, you know, Amari Brown might break loose for a big game, but you just, it's hard to see, especially with how both front sevens are are playing probably two of the top three or four front sevens in the FCS that the rushing attacks are going to go for, you know, 350 yards and just dominate the game. And so I do think the quarterback play is going to be uh, big in this one and just where we're at with the rivalry game. Uh, Cause yeah, I started covering NDSU in the, in the early 2010s and to think, that a decade later, South Dakota State would be yeah. riding a five-game winning streak was just, you know, unimaginable. And I remember when South Dakota State got, you know, they, they broke the losing streak in, in 2016, I think it yep. was. Like, I think I was at a wedding during when that happened, and, like, I seen the final result pop up. It was, like, jarring. It was, yeah. like, holy crap, South Dakota State beat NDSU. Like, <laughs> it was, like, a huge shock. And now it's it's obviously the norm now with the five-game uh, winning streak. And so um, I just think there's there's so much on the line here big picture wise, small picture wise, like rankings and seeds and just where the programs, you know, go from here. Um, I think it's, it's maybe one of the more um, impactful regular season FCS games we've had just, just on yeah. so many different levels. Well, let me ask you that. Is the, is the top seed up for grabs on Saturday night? It could be. Um, there still are some difficult games ahead for both. 
Um, NDSU schedule kind of lightens up uh, a, a little bit, but um, you know that that game at uh, or it's I think it's home versus Missouri State. That could be a potentially a difficult one, and for South Dakota State too. Um, I, I think that if they win this game, they're obviously on a good track to be maybe the one seed, if not the number two seed. But uh, they still have South Dakota. Uh, they still have to go to UND. Yep. Um, they still have to go to Missouri State, who. You know, again, I think Missouri State plays NDSU and South Dakota State they in do. the last two weeks, yep. and they could throw a wrench into things. Um, they're not eligible for the playoffs, but they could still impact the playoffs uh, some way because I think most state is actually looking uh, pretty solid. And But, whoever, yeah, whoever wins this game, I think, is definitely in the driver's seat for a top-two seed along with Montana State. The fact that it's 7 o'clock, ESPN2, you and I are obsessed with TV ratings. What do we think? How many? Granted, Georgia and Texas are playing on – on WDAY on, on Saturday night, there's going to be some eyeballs on that. But what do we can we expect for a rating? You think on this game? Yeah, the TV competition will be stiff. Will be you know <laughs> tough. So you know I don't know. I will. It'll probably be more than Montana State Idaho from this last yes. week, just because. I mean, a lot of these TV viewers are casual viewers, and when viewers see Montana State up twenty eight nothing or whatever, they, they probably flip it off, and so. The, usually TV ratings for Saturday games come out on Tuesday. Um, and so we'll see what Montana state Idaho have probably a, a few hundred thousand, 300,000 maybe. Um, and the Dakota marker, you know, one versus two, maybe you could get half a million. Um, if it's on ESPN, then it could maybe trickle up toward a million, yeah. but regular season games, ESPN two, maybe half a million, um, you know, just depending on what's happening elsewhere. So the other game Saturday night, LSU, Arkansas is on ESPN at six. That's not bad. Georgia, Texas might be some eyeballs on that one's on WDAY, ABC. Fox Sports 1 has uh, UCF and Iowa State. Eh. Fox has Kansas State, West Virginia. Kleiman's playing there. Uh, And I think NBC has Michigan State and Iowa. That's not great. So maybe. I don't know. I'm I'm really interested. I'm really interested to see what happens on that. Yeah, and a lot of people now have multiple screens going, no doubt, and, and all of that. And so, um, I, I think it'll be a pretty decent number, you know, especially because those North Dakota State and South Dakota State are recognizable names. They'll they'll see one versus two, you know, ne- next to their names again, assuming one versus two. Um, and so, I mean, we'll see what the numbers are. I'm just I know we talked about it last week, but thankfully it's not on ESPN. Yes, that would have gotten like yes. fifty thousand. Correct. Views. If that'd be on ESPN too, it'll it'll get a healthy amount of people watching. All right, so we mentioned the Bison Jacks. It's an easy rubber stamp for your highlight games for this upcoming weekend. What are the other matchups you're looking forward to this coming weekend? Yeah, the Dakota Marker, obviously number one. Uh, I'm al- I'm also really interested in Mercer at Samford yeah. uh, because Mercer continues to climb the rankings, and you know Samford probably not a playoff team, but you know they could they could upset some people and be a tricky opponent in the SoCon. And it seems like we ha- we have these teams like. Oh, Central Arkansas, they could be pretty good. Well, they lost. Yep. Well, what about Abilene Christian? Maybe they could be pretty good. And then they lost. And so is that ha- happened to Mercer this week where everyone thinks they're really good and then they drop a game to an unranked team and then they kind of fall back. So that one's interesting. Um, I really like McNeese at UIW as well. Yeah. I think UIW could potentially run the table and be a top eight to 10 seed. Um, McNeese, uh, they're getting really good quarterback play out of Clifton McDowell, but he he dealt with a finger injury a couple of weeks ago. So we'll see his status there. Uh, and then Delaware at Richmond. Um, Delaware is similar to Missouri State, not eligible for the FCS playoffs, but is a rankable team right now if they could be ranked. I think they're 5-0 and or 6-0. and um, And so Delaware can't make the playoffs, but they could impact the playoffs yep. by beating some teams that are in the playoff picture. I mean, I think Richmond is is probably a rankable team um, right now. Not a great resume, but you know, I think four and one versus the FCS for Richmond. So that that's another interesting one out of the CAA. You also have your first bracketology out. Mine's coming out later this week. Uh, which uh, first off, was it easier to bracket with sixteen seeds now? It it is easier now because before you obviously have the top eight seeds and then you just have the the other 16 right. teams where it's like throw them wherever and try to match <laughs> them up on you know via bus trips and regionality because you if you're going to do bracketology you should try to do it right Correct. as many bus yep. trips as possible but now you have the 16 seed that gets paired with the one seed and 15 two so you already have nine through 16 locked in and then you just take the the other eight <laughs> and you still have to do some google map action <laughs> and get the bus trips and all that but it is much easier. And um, yeah, I will say right now I have Montana state as the one seed. This is projecting ahead. Yep. Um, North Dakota state, the two seed and South Dakota state, um, you know, the three seed. So that is, 
you know, potentially giving away what my tr- what my prediction is for this upcoming weekend since I'm predi- projecting ahead. But um, yeah, I, th- I mean, this is the Carter Market game could determine who is the home team in Correct. the match for the second. I, yep, like that's, I'm, that's how big I'm totally with you. Be. I totally agree on that. Um, yep. you, UND in is one of the last four. My, I, I had this asked of me when we were in Carbondale this weekend, and this is my last question, but we got to roll. Is seven and five in a twelve game season good enough? Depending, I know it's you're looking at a blind resume, or eight and four is going to get you in. Seven and five, depending who you're seven against, is that enough? You think to get in this year? Possibly, I think like seven and five is the same now as what six and five has been in previous years, where you can get in at six and five, right. but it's going to be very hard to do and. Like if Montana finishes the season strong, that is obviously going to help UND. Um, I think eight and four probably gets you in, um, especially out of the Valley because they're going to have some ranked wins, but it, it's going to be tough for UND. Um, I think to, you know, not be on the bubble, whether in or out, because um, you look at some of the remaining games, they, they get both South Dakota teams at home. Um, so, you know, that could be interesting at Illinois state, maybe isn't as daunting. Um, and so I think there is a pathway for UND to, you know, be in that seven to eight win range. And that puts them, you know, on the bubble, are they on the right side of the bubble or the wrong side of the bubble? Yeah. We'll have to see, but I have them in right now. Cause I think, I, I think Montana is going to finish pretty strong and that's going to help UND as well. And I think UND, um, you know, has an opportunity to get, you know, four more wins. I think so too. I, I would yep. say right now. Yes. And so that puts yep. them at, at eight and four. And right. so that's why I have them in, um, you know, on, on the right side of the bubble. South Dakota is going to be in a conversation here and maybe we'll talk next week on the coyotes, but they're, they're going to figure into this somehow, some way. They obviously have the Jacks next week. They host the buys and end the season. They come to grand forks. USD is going to be heard from one way or the other over the last five weeks of the season. I, I think so too. Um, they're looking really good to start, yep. but you know, they, they have, you know, road trips to South Dakota State and to UND, that, that's going to be difficult. They host NDSU. Um, I mean, if, if the Bison are, if the top two seed is on the line for the Bison <laughs> in the regular season finale, you expect like a really sharp performance by the Bison. So that's going to be a difficult yep. home win for USD. Uh, but they're looking good right now. I mean, their defense is strong, even though they lost some guys. Offense is looking really good. Um, they're going to be a factor. Um, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're a strong we're talking about the top three teams. I think <laughs> USD is a very strong number four team yep. right now. You're the man. Thanks for doing this as always. And uh, I will see you this weekend. All right. All right. Sounds good. I'll be there. Thank you. Sam Herter joins us each and every Monday at 935 to give us the lowdown of what's going on in FCS football. And it's going to be fantastic coming up on Saturday. We'll break. We come back. We'll wrap our one. Jeff Kolpak on deck as well. So we'll look ahead to the Bison of the Jacks where any issue sits. They got beat up on Saturday. Hot Mike rolls on. We're back after this.